I've worked with uh, development assistance and uh, diplomacy for a number of years, five years in the United Nations and 30 years with the uh, European Union. Uh, I was in the external service of the European Union and I was uh, posted to uh, Africa, three countries in, in Africa over the years, one in Asia and one in the Caribbean. And in all these cases I worked on uh, the EU's development assistance, human rights and political issues. After retirement from the uh, European Union, um, I was uh, honored to basically have been appointed to visiting uh, professor here at the University of, of Huddersfield. Um, and I was very happy to be part of the uh, non in three center, I must say. And uh, it, it, where did you originally come about to uh, the non in three center? Well, um, when I was the uh, EU ambassador uh, to the Eastern Caribbean, we uh, were about to, to finance a project on uh, gender-based violence. And the Donian Three, they uh, submitted a bid. We uh, thought that the concept was fantastic, so we went along with it. Later on, it turned out that the execution was equally good and uh, that was uh, a great success, to be honest, for the European Union. But it was also uh, fantastic for me because I recommended the project to the European Union. And I was subsequently uh, very happy to, uh, to become part of the International Advisory Group here at, at Huddersfield University in, in the non-in-3 centre. Um, because um, I was hoping that, I thought it was much more interesting to be part of a more global project where I had an, uh, a possibility to be involved in a project that now was not only about the Caribbean but about uh, um, lots of other countries that I've been dealing with over the years including India, India, uh, Uganda and it also includes Jamaica and then to have the United Kingdom involved in the project is also very interesting because that is after all and still is a European Union country. So to be able to make the comparison was very interesting. And uh, that made me um, quite happy, I must say, uh, with, with this uh, new chance I've got to work uh, or to be associated with the University of Huddersfield. You talked about your interest in uh, domestic violence. Yeah. Um, what stands out or what stood out for you uh, with the Non in Three project? Well, I think the Non in Three is extremely important uh, because it is first of all very innovative in its approach and, and which is a, a, a research approach. But at the same time, it is also a project that uh, gets it straight over into activism. So you understand uh, gender-based violence and you do something about it. And for someone who's defended human rights for years, that's a perfect combination. And, and is it the video element that, that stands out for you as uh, unique? Um, well, the, uh, the computer-based uh, approach is, uh, is interesting. And we actually, with the project already, the pilot project in the Caribbean, it was, it was proved that it worked in reality. One could actually measure the uh, behavioral change uh, for children who used the video game. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Specifically, uh, uh, the violence is, uh, uh, tends to be against uh, women and girls. Uh, what role should men uh, have in the prevention of this? Men are sometimes uh, caught in, in, in violent roles by wars, by moors and traditions um, that they did not invent themselves. Um, breaking the patterns and um, fully understanding the value of relationships uh, based on affection could uh, open a new world beyond violence, drinking, and other domestic problems. Um, one is, in a sense, emancipating men by encouraging, in, 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 encouraging them uh, to always play 
a non-violent role and a loving role towards uh, women and children, that would make their lives easier and in, in this way it would become a win win situation for both men and women. You, you're giving a talk tonight to fill in the vacuum uh, mm. who will save uh, multilateralism. Um, has, would you say, the UN failed is too strong a word, but do you think the UN is not able to um, fill this vacuum? Well, I will try to, to argue tonight that um, multilateral uh, organizations and the UN uh, bodies in general, they have never found it easy to carry out their, their mandates. But in recent years, this has been compounded by populist tendencies. Uh, when uh, Donald Trump, he took over power in the United States uh, a couple of years ago, I think it took a turn uh, for the worse. And that uh, threatens many multilateral agendas and, and bodies. And the damage could be irreparable um, if the vacuum that is left by the United States pulling out of various organizations is not filled. And um, for all its flaws, I think the United Nations um, remains the most representative, the most legitimate uh, global structure, which is uniquely suited uh, to, to serve as a forum for mitigating the world's problems. And we have many problems today. In fact, the planet is up against the wall in many respects when it comes to, to climate, resources, uh, water, uh, pandemics. Um, and uh, of course, the uh, um, climatic changes alone uh, makes it quite clear that uh, we, we, do, we need multilateralism, perhaps more than ever before. Can that be done if the United States will not take part as, as what is one of the uh, biggest powers in the world? Well, my, um, one of my conclusions, of course, it's, uh, there are many elements uh, of, of, of the answer to your questions. But uh, simply put, I believe that um, the European uh, Union actually understands the role of the United Nations for the simple reason that it is based on the same value system. If you look at the uh, treaties of the European Union and you look at the UN Charter, you will find it more or less the same values, human rights based, etc. So the European Union, they will continue to put pressure on the on the UN to reform itself. And the reason why the European Union uh, is doing this is because it's got a very clear self-interest in leading the way forward towards effective multilateralism because it depends on it itself, not only in the relations between the European Union and the rest of the world, but recently even within the European Union, you need these values to be strengthened. Do, do you think there's the will in the European Union to do that? I do you think, think it could be effective? I think, uh, I think there is a will, but it has to be strengthened. The European Union has to work on this internally. But as I said, my analysis is that the, the, the self-interest is, is so strong that to some extent the European has no choice. It will need to find a way to strengthen multilateralism, to give it a, a second renaissance now, which is necessary. If you remember back, the United Nations was formed in the chaos of World War II. Um, and it was uh, created because people, they had the vision that in order for the world to become a peaceful place that could, where one country could coexist with the other, you will need an organization where multilateralism thrived. Trade, rebuilding, everything depended on that. And you could to some extent say we are there now as well. Multilateralism is being eaten away every day, but in future, uh, so it's better to start rebuilding it now and reforming the United Nations so that we are ready. Perhaps one day the European Union can persuade a future president of the United States to come back again as well, which would be the, the best solution of them all. But okay. can I ask you a counsel question? Who else could do this? And what would your answer be? None. Nobody. There is no other actor on the international scene that could actually go in uh, and defend uh, multilateralism and help in the reform of the UN as effectively as the European Union. Is that because 
there are so many countries involved, 28 currently, whereas some of the other major players in the UN are just countries of their own, China, the US, and thus have their own self-interest, whereas the European Union can think broader than that. The European Union is a major global power. It, it, it has uh, an enormous uh, GDP. If you put the whole European Union together, 28, it's the highest in, in the world, higher than the United States. The United States um, was basically behind the creation of the League of Nations and the United Nations, its successor, because it was the leading power at the time. I think the European Union today, with its, um, uh, with its economic power, its value system would be, and the fact that the United uh, States has left a vacuum, is the only one left to, uh, to pick up the gauntlet. And finally, do you see it happening? Um, I am definitely uh, seeing signs in the right direction, but I would also expect that more will, will happen in, in the future. I think in, in the next commission, more will happen. Um, I think it's more or less unavoidable. The University of Huddersfield, inspiring tomorrow's professionals.